first of all thank you so much for this opportunity you know it's great to talk to you today when we started looking at this uh, code uh, obviously first thing is about detecting and you know trying to you know make sure that we have a proper detection mechanism against that but then after that it's also to do a reverse engineering to really decode the way infector is working and then figure out a way to sort of remediate and i will talk about the technicalities of what really how it really was uh, but i think uh, you know it actually gives a testimony to the kind of um, uh, capability and talent we have within the country and uh, and it also you know like we are on par with any any other uh, cyber security vendor in the world right uh, and uh, and i think uh, so it obviously speaks uh, well about uh, our uh, you know uh, that talent and uh, and it, it 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 underlines the fact that we have been sort of able to do this uh, and demonstrate to the world that you know we we have necessary capabilities in managing this problem for future as well we we have seen multiple traces of uh, infections uh, in all the deployments that we have done in india so you know we were obviously uh in the forefront of looking at you know what what this malware was doing um and as you know that you know malware does propagate through various methods you know whether it is crack software or whether it is drive by download uh, from infected websites or you know even propagation through network shares right uh, so it obviously used uh, all or any of these techniques uh, for propagation uh, and uh, although i would say that india uh, as a country its hygiene is constantly growing uh, in terms of use of legitimate software and uh, understanding of you know the the controls and safeguards that one needs to put in uh, but there's always you know there's always vulnerable uh, infrastructure vulnerable users and that's really what we have seen in this case as well when you look at a infector right there are two types of infector broadly you know one is called as appender another is called prepender right and and uh, expiro was actually in the uh, an appender virus right and uh, and then those are very rare as compared to prepender okay and what it does is that basically it takes that particular header and it moves it to somewhere else and <clears throat> as a result of that it becomes difficult to uh find out you know where that is and then accordingly do it and the second complexity in case of expiro was that there were multiple codes and functions which were called to create a significant amount of complexity so you'll get lost in the maze right while you're trying to do a reverse engineering you get lost in the maze because there are so many complexity introduced by the author the the infector and as a result of that what we landed up is seeing huge complexity and so you need to really find out how the program is working to really then find out where it is going uh, to to replace that header back to its original position right uh, but you know we we obviously have been having our uh, quick heal uh, you know security lab for almost 3 decades so we have strong uh, established processes uh, talent frameworks methodologies to really understand so the team work analysts and researchers worked on this took it as a challenge to really understand how all of this was unfolding and then eventually you know we found out a way to go back and restore the file to its original form so like i said right it is basically you know uh, we have the set of processes methodologies talent you know motivation passion uh and and obviously the need to solve this problem right so therefore any any uh any uh, mal code which comes to our labs we obviously you know put all our effort to make sure that we are able to do reverse engineering and you know address that and so we are glad that we could we were the first to sort of uh solve this problem and perhaps the only only company right now who has solved this as yet right and there are claims that you know one could uh when i solved it but when we are looking at testing it on other other av vendors we still not able they are not able to fully uh, restore the files right which we are able to right now but of course you know uh, others will catch up as well uh but yeah so you know extremely proud of what the team has been able to do um yeah, it can only happen when you have 
you know all the things working together and argues well towards you know the uh, you know the the investments and the focus that we have had in this topic but also argues well for you know the the future of uh, our team you know it gives us a lot of confidence it makes us proud about what we have been able to do but the confidence is important because then you know if you are able to solve a complex threat like this uh, which we believe is going to be the norm in future uh, then we are well poised towards making sure that any future uh, complex malware which comes in we will be able to sort of tackle it as well we are obviously in, in the forefront of cyber security research malware research in the country right i think we are uh, one of the most established uh, you know brands in the companies uh, as far as india is concerned and uh, and we we obviously you know uh, collaborate a lot with all our peers lessons are basically that you know uh, perseverance and persistence helps in uh, helping to you know resolve so you cannot let go of a particular challenge uh, you need to be persistent and find, figure out a way to uh, address it. Uh, investing uh, in the right people, in the right talent, in the right technology, in the right processes, in the right systems, and the right mindset and creating the culture is extremely important. And that is the only thing which will bear fruit in terms of what we're looking for. Um, but, you know, I think it finally it boils down to the, the team, you know, and how much passion they have towards doing it. So I think creating the right passion in them is very critical uh, for success. So I think these are some of the uh, lessons learned or experiences that we've had while not just while tackling this issue, but generally, you know, when we're looking at uh, the problem as a whole. See, we are, uh, we are obviously, uh, you know, talking uh, to all our stakeholders to see how some of the work that we're doing can be leveraged, right? Um, and um, and we have been always in the forefront of collaborating with any any government bodies or any uh, even corporate bodies uh, for for helping them in understanding um, you know the the threats in much more uh, details and depth. We uh, we have a very large uh, uh, arm of work that we do for capacity building in terms of uh, cyber suraksha, where we partner with DSEI. Uh, the Data Security Council of India uh, and help in terms of training and uh, building uh, talent and uh, nurturing talent and grooming talent for understanding cybersecurity fundamentals and cybersecurity uh, techniques and solutions. Uh, so we are playing, we are committed to playing a very important role, you know, in terms of capacity building as far as the nation is concerned and also building an indigenous make in India uh kind of a story as far as cybersecurity is concerned you know we are the pioneering uh cybersecurity company in the country and we want to take that role responsibility to help lead the way in terms of driving uh, driving all these initiatives one of the things that uh, jesh i've been talking about uh in every every opportunity that i get is about democratizing cybersecurity Okay, and, and what I mean by that is exactly the point that you mentioned, right? In terms of how do I make sure that cybersecurity is a is a responsibility for everyone? See, what generally happens is that we say that you know there is a cybersecurity team, or there is a certain, or there is one team here, and so you know I can just offload all the work that I expect to be done in cybersecurity to these teams. But the reality is far away from that, right? Uh, at best, the cybersecurity teams are the catalyst, an active catalyst in driving uh, the the cybersecurity framework and change within the organization. But unless you are uh, participating in that whole process and understand your role and take ownership and accountability of your role, it becomes very difficult uh, to really implement cybersecurity in, in a holistic way, right? So democratizing cybersecurity, making sure every stakeholder understands their role, I think is very critical. And uh, I think, uh, and I think that that is the key challenge, right? Because everybody has their day job, and uh, cybersecurity is only visible when it's not working, right? And it's <laughs> invisible when it's working. So therefore, uh, so therefore, you know, if you don't get hacked, even if you're vulnerable, you think as if you know you are, uh, you have all the necessary controls, which is not the case, right? And until you get, you know, breached or you get hacked. So I think. Uh, I think it's very important that every stakeholder understands their responsibility, especially given the fact that there is so much of digital adoption in the country and you know globally as well. 
uh, that you know the foundational bedrock of every digital evolution and acceleration has to be cybersecurity right and uh, and that is the only way you can run faster you know in your business so so i think in my mind we need to keep talking about it and spread the message about democratizing and making people accountable for cyber if you look at the evolution of digital and adoption of digital we are seeing that you know it's been exponential right whether you talk about adoption of cloud whether you talking about now ai when we talking about uh, you know you can't imagine any business model without a digital presence right digital is us right now right you can't imagine any person without a screen anymore whether it's your computer screen your tablets or your mobile phones right, right. you just cannot escape that so i think the digital footprint the digital identities the digital transactions the digital connections are part and parcel of our society and and this constant innovation is actually creating fundamental systemic vulnerabilities that are getting exploited by the threat actors now the threat actors have multiple motivations sometimes they are nation state sometimes they are hacktivists sometimes they are only there to monetize through criminal gangs whichever motivations are there i think it's a asynchronous us asymmetric warfare where uh, you know you the, the threat actors need to just exploit one one of your vulnerabilities and the good guys have to protect all of the vulnerabilities so because of the asymmetry we are seeing a exponential rise of these attacks right and and every year i mean i've been in cyber security for more than 23 years now every single year it gets worse than the previous year okay so if i just go by the rear view mirror and look at what has happened in past you can almost predict the future which is going to be more innovation so therefore more vulnerabilities a larger attack surface continued uh, motivations for threat actors uh, to have incentives to continue and create uh, attacks and so therefore it results into a uh, more number of attacks and more number of uh, cyber security losses for organizations and for nation states right so i think this trend is going to continue right now we believe that as a quick heal we have a, a a purpose and our purpose stated purpose is about constant innovation by to help improve the experience of digital experience uh by making sure it is secure right so embedding security to improve digital experience through innovation that is the stated purpose of quickheal and apart from you know the work that we have done for last three decades through quickheal and our consumer brand for last 6 7 years we have created a brand called securite and securite is our enterprise security brand we have got multiple set of products in a uh, data privacy and protection in uh, zero trust uh, access in making sure that you have the right enterprise security in terms of uh, epp xdr edr and so on and so forth and the idea is to really bring that value of quick heal through secure right to our enterprise customers so we want to play a role in solving this problem and be a, a reputed global player uh you know for the work that we do i am extremely encouraged by the amount of enthusiasm passion that young entrepreneurs in india right now uh, displaying uh, by by venturing into building cyber security solutions i was just attending uh, a fintech conclave in mumbai a couple of months back and the amount of people who were there young talent creating various solutions and services on cyber security is just amazing and extremely fascinating for me it has never been like this uh before right so we are sort of creating a silicon valley here uh for cyber security entrepreneurs right and i think the time is right you know because we've done that if you look at it in terms of what we have done in the it services space 
while the, where the global GSIs of the world are actually the you know from India, we have an opportunity to start creating uh, an impact uh, through our products, right? And uh, and so we, it is definitely encouraged. Uh, you know, in all way, I think we have done a lot of work as a company to uh, in that you know we have been a pioneering cybersecurity company uh, from India. And and uh, hopefully we'd like to lead the way and you know give some direction to young entrepreneurs to you know follow this uh, and you know pursue their ambition towards building uh, security solutions for not just for Indian Indian customers for for the global customers. See when it comes to uh, you know I'm obviously a very optimistic person right so I'm always hopeful to for a better future and better tomorrow. Therefore, you take necessary steps towards, you know, going and inching towards that, right? Uh, and I, I believe that every every cybersecurity professional should be should be optimistic and confident about the future. In fact, we are always aspiring for that, right? On on your highway, you need to follow the rules, you need to follow the signals, you need to ensure proper decorum is in place for you to be safe and secure. And you know what happens if you don't follow those. Similarly, on an internet highway, you need to be able to make sure there are proper rules and uh, tools which are deployed and controls which are there and if you don't then obviously you know you will you will get impacted and there will be accidents right so my hope is that we will continue to uh, and, and right now for example we are slightly behind the threat actors because it's a cat and mouse game and we are always by nature of by nature running behind them rather than going uh, ahead of them but our hope is to see uh, the ultimate aim for any any cybersecurity professional is to be able to build a solution which is so robust that you know it will not generate uh, even future it is future proof and does not generate vulnerabilities in future but we are not there as yet uh, but we want to create solutions which are adaptable resilient uh, you know so that you, it is able to be future proof uh, the the See, I, I am not a, a person who will sort of paint a picture of gloom and doom because, you know, human beings as a race have been always resilient, right? So we don't allow for a problem to go to linger around for such a long time that it becomes unmanageable, right? Whether it is cybersecurity or whether I hope the climate change. Uh, but the impact of uh, cybersecurity is much more visible as compared to a climate change. So, you know, if, if for example... Uh, your neighbor or some organization gets impacted you get to know uh, the immediate aftermath of that and so therefore you start worrying about it i already believe that cyber security as a topic is mainstream and so everybody is taking it extremely seriously um, so i i do believe that you know uh, the the natural the global disaster type of event will be very rare uh, uh, it's quite possible, but it's going to be very rare. Uh, but there are there are definitely a lot of fault lines uh, that I, I see. I, I've been writing about them. Uh, perhaps someday we'll talk about them as well. But there are definitely fault lines. And I think we should not ignore those fault lines and start taking a very concrete step towards, uh, you know, taking them head on and taking necessary steps in the society, in corporate, and in government to to start creating a more cyber safe digital experience